Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone, in this number 10 multiple choice question, I bring uh, five multiple choice question. There are a lot of uh, good stuff you can learn in this, uh, this lecture or clip. Try to give your best uh, guess for answer. I like to you brainstorming and uh, get all your knowledge together and try answer before you hear my explanation. Let's do it. First one, here we are doing uh, tap C in two different uh, view, off axis medial, as you can see, this is off axis medial, a little move probe to the medial and a little higher. And this one is RV focused view. So which one for tap C is correct? This one or this one? Second, which one underestimate the, our measurement? Five seconds, I think will be enough. Let's see answer. As you know, the tap C, the concept of a tap C is that how much the annulus of the right ventricle move forward to the apex, that is excursion of the uh, annulus. So in this case, movement, our cursor is almost off, very off the movement of the annulus. So in this case, we have underestimate amount of the movement and going toward the apex. As you can see here, 2.2 on this one that is almost parallel the cursor, the movement of annulus exactly almost parallel, so it gets the highest one. The same concept is for TAPS V or uh, TDI on the lateral annulus of tricuspid for the S prime. So for the tissue Doppler, if you want to do tissue Doppler, again, this one is more correct than RV focus view. Okay, first one. In following image, we did this study. First of all, what is this study? What type of study is modality? What is the name of modality? Second, which window and view is this? on the top one here, which window and views. Third, here we measure in this one, measure here. What is this parameter has been measured? Okay, you have 20 seconds. I think you are done because if you saw my lecture about that topics is a piece of cake for you. Okay, let's go answer. Okay, the answer, as you can see here, we have a four chamber view. Since the probe is behind the left atrium, we know this is TEE and T mid esophageal four chamber. I talk about the T in uh, many other clips. Here, uh, this is color M mode. Uh, on the color M mode, we just put color and put uh, continuous cursor uh, uh, of the M mode, not continuous. We put color on the mitral valve, then we put cursor and we decrease because this uh, blood flow go this way uh, for the VP, velocity propagation, so we shift the baseline toward the, the direction of the flu. The flu is this way for mitral valve inflow, so baseline down, and we create a liaising. With the liaising, we can measure the slope, and it gives us VP. Here you can see those features, everything, mitral valve, LA, 
LV, RV, some part of tricuspid, and a little here, RA. In a patient with normal body size, a following uh, M mode study has been done and measured some parameter. Based on this, which of the following probably you can see in the study? Positive shifting continuous Doppler on apical five chamber at aorta. LVED diastolic more than 60 millimeter or 6 centimeter. High stroke volume, B and C, or all of them. And most probably all of you have answer. Let's see the answer. Okay, as you can see here, we measured at the aortic root at the level of the sinus valsalva. So at the end, the also this is aortic var M mode. You can see cusp opening and closing. This part is endostolic, outer to inner. So uh, the take measure aortic root at the level of the sinus valsalva. As you know, in average people, not those are very tall and huge. The cutoff for aortic root uh, dimension is four. Four above is aneurysm. So in aneurysm, uh, what happened? The ring of the aortic valve expanded and pulling the cusp away from each other and since in aneurysm uh, the cusp doesn't elongate and doesn't grow or doesn't elast, uh, uh, stretch so the tip of the cusp cannot reach out each other and so we will have a defect on the valve and orifice and finally we in those patients with aneurysm we have AI or aortic regurgitation or insufficiency. When we have aortic regurgitation or insufficiency, some blood during the hospital goes backward and some kind of a volume overload happen on the left ventricle. When we have overvolume load in any kind of the valvular regurgitation, if it's moderate above, in long term, over volume load cause dilatation of that cavity. For example, here aorta cause LV enlargement. And the mitral valve regurgitation cause in moderate above, in long term cause uh, enlargement of the left atrium, as you can see on these two, two uh, jet. The patient has both. Okay, so patient has enlargement and we can measure on the LVAD dust uh, over six centimeter upper limit normal. So we will expect this patient have it in long term. If is moderate, usually you cannot say 100% this patient has depending on what time of the uh, process of the disease happened. Is that recently or no, is long and just based on the size, we cannot say this is moderate, it cause moderate or mild or severe. So we cannot answer 100% this patient will have enlargement of left ventricle or not, unless you see on the color and continuously all uh, the, the grade of the AI, if it's moderate, after a few months, maybe start enlargement of the left ventricle. Generally, in the mild regurgitation, in any kind of the valvular regurgitation, because of the elasticity and collagen and fibrin on the myocardium, they don't cause enlargement in the cavity unless it become moderate and long to get to that specific point that the elasticity and springing uh, property of the myocardium get to a breaking point in that moment start 
enlargement of the cavity. When we have in all valve and any area, when we have regurgitation, so we have endostolic volume increased. Here, end systolic on the mitral, uh, on the LA, on the LV or RV, when we have TR, the same mechanism, phenomenon, so it creates uh, left ventricle and the osteolytic volume. When left ventricle and the osteolytic volume, 100% we have high stroke volume. Unless we have at the same time significant MR. In this case, for example, even we have high end diastolic volume, but because most of it goes to the uh, left atrium, in this case, maybe you don't see uh, high stroke volume because most of this go back to the LA. That is the reason uh, on those valvular regurgitation, we have to fix the uh, valvular problem before get to that point that almost is irreversible. It cannot go back even with uh, fixing the valve. The size and all those damage has already happened and it almost is impossible. Those changes goes back to the normal. I'm going, talk, I'm going to talk about the regurgitation in two, three or even more uh, lecture. And the final about the Doppler shift. As you can see on the apical tree or five, doesn't matter. Jet is toward the transducer can cause positive shift. So the, uh, you got all answer. Now let's, uh, let's go to the next one. Next one. <laughs> Here we have a, a tech get apical four and two at this spot, this blue spot. Very classic apical four and two. But uh, he or she had some struggle for apical tree with some movement around, finally got this apical tree. Base of the apical four was here, and classic means apex at the center of the sector, and vertical at the apical four, septum vertical, apex at the center of the image, and finally, apical tree in this, after maneuvering from this spot. Now, in this apical tree, where the probe most probably is now. At this spot, one intercostal higher medial, the same level, a little lateral, the same spot medial, one intercostal lower at the same uh, line and direction. Those that has been uh, checking my apical three and four are very familiar with this maneuvers and view and all those stuff. Okay, let's see the answer. As you know, apical uh, three, four, two, all of them are the same level, classic one. So when you get four, just with twisting, contact like was finally two and three. The apical four is at the center, classic apex at the center, all of them at the center apex. That is a classic spot. But on this image, as you can see, apex is moved to the left. Even the relationship, those feature and parameter landmark is good. This apical three chamber, but little off axis. What does mean of access? Tech has moved probe to the where? Closer to the base. Since the orientation of the heart is this, the only way you can get apical off access a little higher, you move toward the base of the heart. So your probe go one intercostal higher. As you can see, probe is close to this area and apex to the left. So now most probably tech got apical tree at this spot. In apical 5, we did continuous Doppler on the aorta. You might hear, Kerzer is completely parallel to the LVOT and aorta. 
and we got the following Doppler. We have two envelope, one and two. Each of them belong to where? Is that this one artifact or aorta or the second one? Each of them belong to where? Second. Can we use this two envelope and measure for LVOT and for aorta and calculate dimension index or velocity ratio for aortic stenosis and you know what are those uh, criteria is dimension index, dimension less index or velocity index. So can we use it this one for that purpose or not? And third, uh, which one belong to the aorta, which one belong to the LVOT, if there is. You have 20 seconds. I think most of you have answer. As you know, uh, continuous CW records and capture all velocity around the cursor from the skin, if there is any, to the apex, all the way to the aorta. In all those spots, wherever is velocity, there is machine capture velocity, and that is the reason we have different velocity and blood flow. We have very full spectral, doesn't matter for LV, LVOT or aorta, all of them. This technique actually is one of the more reliable uh, for getting dimensionless index, uh, because at the same moment, at the same cycle, we, uh, we do uh, measure, capture, velocity in all those two important spots, aorta and LVOT. If we don't have aortic stenosis and we have good window and good optimizing, as you can see here, since if we don't have LVOT obstruction, the first one will be LVOT and second one will be aorta. In this patient has severe aortic stenosis, you can see over uh, six almost. And this is in many places, many, if you work many uh, cardiology department, if you have good Doppler, good windows and good optimizing, very sharp border for each of those envelope, that is the best way. Uh, for even measuring, even measuring AVA, aortic valve area. But in those cases that we have LVO2 obstruction, you have to know, okay, uh, first of all, it, in those cases, we have, usually we get dagger shape and a little will be complicated. I'm not going to talk about this in this uh, lecture or multiple choice question. And a future, I will go over those conditions.